This episode of Because Science is brought to you by Just Cause 4. Get ready to bring the thunder with Just Cause 4, available now. Can you survive Just Cause 4's grappling hook? When it comes to superhero tech, you can find the concept of a fast, efficient grappling hook everywhere, used by everyone from the Dark Knight himself, Batman, to that breath of fresh wild link. A grappling hook is even your main mode of transportation in the Just Cause video game franchise. But can the human body even survive a device like this? <laughs> Whoa! Just Cause 4, the most recent pop culture grappling hook extravaganza, is a bombastic game. You can ride rockets, attach bad guys to a passing semi-truck, and in Just Cause 4, you can even control the weather. But Rico's grappling hook is definitely the star of the franchise. It would be hard to imagine him without it. We've talked about how potentially dangerous grappling hooks can be on this program before, and I know why video games, movies, comic books, and everything else portrays grappling hooks the same way. They have to be fast and powerful because no one playing a video game wants to wait around and get bored with their own movement. That speed and efficiency, though, makes me wonder, in real life, can you handle moving like this? First, we should be clear that so-called grappling hooks aren't just pop culture constructions, we've made them already. For example, take the Atlas-powered Ascender. This Ascender can be combined with a launched grappling hook in order to haul firefighters, military personnel, and line workers, and other people up whatever they need to get up quickly. This Ascender can move over 272 kilograms straight up off the ground at 1.2 meters or 4 feet per second. Now I know that sounds slow, but it's very impressive considering it can get someone in full gear up a 10-story building in under 30 seconds. This, however, comes nowhere close to the power of fictional grappling hooks. Fictional grappling hooks are smaller, quicker, and they provide a lot more pulling force, which we can calculate. If we want good grap stats, we will need numbers. To get the forces that fictional grappling hooks apply to their characters, we will need the mass of one of those characters, like Just Cause's Rico, and how quickly the grappler moves them along. Oh no, please take your time. Wanting to know how much your mass accelerates is the same thing as wanting to know how much your velocity changes over time, how much your momentum changes. And in Just Cause specifically, they give us numbers that we almost never get in these analyses to do this calculation. Grapple far enough in Just Cause and the game will give you a distance value for your travel. We can use this distance value and count the number of frames in this video to get an average velocity. And if you do that, you see that Rico here travels in this example 122 meters in just under three seconds, which gives him an average velocity of 45 meters per second, 100 miles per hour. Looking at those same three seconds of travel, it looks like Rico attains his final velocity in just under one second. That is fast. It's fast because to get up to that velocity in that short an amount of time, given Rico's 82 kilograms of mass, requires 4,200 newtons or 1,100 pounds of pulling force and pulling six Gs worth of acceleration, being accelerated six times faster than you would during free fall on the surface of the Earth. Now think about that. Sorry, now think about that using a grappling hook and then suddenly having the weight of six U's on your arm while pulling twice as many G's as astronauts do during takeoff. This would feel like opening up a parachute rapidly at terminal velocity. Survivable, yes, but extremely uncomfortable. Oh, cool, okay. At minimum, pop culture grappling hooks offer a serious jolt. Ah, oh, and it only gets worse from here. You can get a lot crazier with a grappling hook than just moving a few dozen meters. Going back to Just Cause, players have found ways to capitalize on the game's mechanics and travel ridiculous distances. In this clip, the player moves almost a kilometer in under 10 seconds. Assuming the same rate of acceleration that we did in the previous clip, this means applying 9,000 newtons or 2,000 pounds of pulling force to Rico's arm here and pulling 12 Gs. For context, pulling 12 Gs is the maximum recommended deceleration in a parachute harness 
if you don't want to risk injury or death. And asking someone to put 2,000 pounds on their arms suddenly is like asking them to suddenly catch a falling car. It would destroy their muscles and tendons. But I'm not gonna catch it, I like my tendies. So far, we've estimated pulling forces and Gs that you'd have to subject yourself to that are scary, but they're not outright lethal. However, up until this point, we've been taking all this footage at face value, assuming that fictional grappling hooks can just take you from point A to point B in a straight line, no problem. What we are ignoring here is the ever-present buzzkill that is gravity. It's easy to forget just how quickly something accelerates here on Earth if you let it drop in freefall. After one second, if you drop it, that object will have traveled five meters, 16 feet. After two seconds, that increases to 20 meters, five seconds, and it will have traveled 123 meters towards the ground, 400 feet. Freefall is aggressive and consistent. You can even use this relationship and this equation to estimate how far something is below you. Just take an object and then count the number of seconds before you hear it hit the ground. Huh. Weird. Anyway, gravity applies to you here on Earth no matter how you travel and no matter how fast you travel. For example, if you took two identical bullets and put them at the exact same height, but you fired one and dropped the other under free fall, in theory, they would hit the ground at exactly the same time. The ever-present pull of gravity applies to grapplers, too. Ugh, ow. The problem here is that pop culture grapplers like Rico almost always travel in a straight line according to the tension force while ignoring the acceleration due to gravity that would pull them to the ground. In reality, if you were standing on the ground or another surface and fired your grappling hook, you'd be scraping your face against the dirt in under a second. Again, I know why video games and movies and everything else ignore this fact. Speed, simplicity, enjoyment, but just for the sake of making our point here, let's do the math anyway. Let's go back to our original example and say you are Rico and you want to grapple to a distant location. How much force would you have to put on your grappling arm to get you to your destination in what approximates a straight line before your center of mass or your face is scraping the ground? Ah, not that much, just 570. Million Newtons of force, and you wouldn't even have to pull that many Gs, just 700. Thousand of them. Now, I'm no rocket doctor, but if you subjected my arm to 40 times the force than the largest SpaceX rocket has in thrust, I am going to lose that arm. Oh, my tendies. Grappling around in a game like Just Cause would in real life range from very uncomfortable to rip your arm off bad. So what are the true limits for human grapplers? Rico, what, we, what have we been talking about this whole time? We've already mentioned that pulling just a few Gs of acceleration or deceleration can be dangerous, but that all depends on time. For example, if I were to drop this marker on the ground because it is very rigid, it will come to a stop in a very short distance and therefore a very short amount of time. It might experience hundreds of Gs, and yet it doesn't get obliterated by them. Stupid boy. Fine, another example. A good high five can impart hundreds of Gs locally to the surface of your hand, and yet the surface of your hand is fine. The difference between a shock like this and the acceleration that you'd experience with a grappling hook is duration. And broadly speaking, the longer you have to deal with some acceleration or deceleration, the lower your tolerance to it. For example, a well-trained NASA pilot might be able to experience the six Gs worth of acceleration for up to 10 minutes if NASA centrifuge data is anything to go on. But as those Gs increase up to around 20, that duration of tolerance goes down to under just 10 seconds. And as you can assume, the higher the Gs, the less the tolerance. Your tolerance to G-force also depends heavily on direction. 
Government agencies like NASA and militaries have been studying G-force tolerance in the human body for years because, for example, it's a good thing to know how many Gs your fighter pilot can pull during a maneuver. We do not know all of the numbers because we haven't done all the testing, but we do have some general numbers to go on, and we now know that direction matters a lot. And when we talk about direction, we're usually referring to what your eyeballs would feel like they are doing, going up, down, in or out. For example, your tolerance to so-called eyeballs in acceleration, like you were sitting in a car that suddenly hit the gas, is 40 Gs for under a second, which is pretty good, but beyond that is injury and then death. Your tolerance to eyeballs out acceleration, like that car slammed on the brakes, is about the same. Your tolerance to eyeballs down acceleration though, like you were standing in a spaceship that was accelerating upwards, is cut in half because of the direction. Blood is getting heavier in your body, like the rest of your body, and being forced into your feet away from your brain, which needs that. Your lowest G tolerance though is for eyeballs up acceleration, like you were in free fall on Jupiter. It's so low, maybe 10 Gs for a short amount of time, because in this case, blood is being forced into your brain, which is also bad. Oh, and it would fill your eyelids, which would be pulled into your field of vision, and then it would look like it's red, so you'd have a red out instead of a blackout. What did I just say, Rico? Everything that we've gone through so far, all the crazy forces and accelerations and your tolerance to them, all bring us back to the grappling hooks that we have in real life. These things simply aren't gonna get pop culture style because humans are fragile. You simply can't pull on a limb safely with tens of thousands of newtons of force, maybe a few hundred, because it takes way less than that to just dislocate a shoulder. And for safety, you would want to keep the acceleration or deceleration to one to two Gs for comfort. And you wouldn't want to attach a grappling hook line to just your arm. You probably want to attach it to your center of mass with a sort of harness. Of course, this won't make you look as dynamically heroic. You'll have to go slow when you're using this this more realistic grappling hook, but at least it will allow you to continue being a functioning hero. Ooh. So, could you survive using a pop culture style grappling hook like you find in Just Cause 4? Well, given our assumptions and numbers and the limits imposed by the human body, reeling in a rope like Rico wouldn't be immediately lethal, but it would be incredibly dangerous. These grappling hooks like you find in the game and other properties are so quick and they pull you so forcefully that you'd have to be almost superhuman to use them effectively. And that's fine. I'd rather play a video game than have my arm ripped off because duh and also science at least just cause unlike other video games and movies at least acknowledges the problem with a grappling hook that is that powerful in one of the games one of the characters is talking about the original design for the grappler that Rico uses and she says that there was a chance of what was it a uh, chance of violent limb detachment so at least they were thinking about it. Available right now, Just Cause 4 sees rogue hero Rico Rodriguez journey to Solace, a huge South American island full of conflict, oppression, and extreme weather conditions to hunt down the truth about his past and defeat high-tech private military organization, The Black Hand. Strap into your wingsuit, equip your fully customizable grappling hook, and get ready to bring the thunder like never before. Thank you so much for watching, Ethan. If you want more of me, go to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com. Do that, sign up, subscribe. You can get this show two days earlier than anyone else and other premium content from Nerdist Geek and Sundry and myself. Also follow me and Because Science on social media there and suggest ideas for future episodes and hit all those buttons that I want you to hit.